Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis and welcome to episode 53. Now, this week I've put together a really quick video because we're kind of short on time at the moment with writing the book, we've got seminars and workshops coming up as well. But I wanted to put together a really quick video to show you something that I'm gonna be doing in a brand new picture, in one of my animal project pictures. And it's three tips, tricks, or techniques, whatever you wanna call them, to do with compositing, okay? Now in this video I have gone into a little bit more explanation about layer masks and adjustment layers so those of you who kind of know that stuff, just look beyond it. I'm trying to cover for everybody here, but I think there's something for everybody in this video, especially part three with this really nice little brush that's already built within Photoshop. But hey, that's enough. Let's crack on and uh, enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so this is a really quick video, mainly for those of you who like to do compositing, because what I wanna do is show you three things that I would do, three tips, tricks, or techniques, whatever you wanna call them, that I would do to make it look as if this line on screen is actually lying within the grass in this scene here. Now, this is gonna form part of a brand new picture I'm working on within my animals picture, but if you haven't all read some animals projects, but if you haven't seen the video that shows how to remove these really annoying gray lines caused from the fencing of the enclosure the lines in definitely head on over to my YouTube channel. But you can see from the picture on screen now, I've removed those lines off our lion, which is the stage that we wanna to get to. I've also done a very quick down and dirty cutout. This isn't gonna be as good a cutout as what I'll have to do when it comes to doing my final picture, but it kind of gets us to where we need to be for this tutorial. So all I'm gonna do is get my move tool and drag the line over and put him into the grass scene here. So once it's in position, I'll just remove him over to here using my move tool. And I wanna show you, like I said, three things that I would do to make it look more realistic or sell the fake as if the lion is actually sitting within this grass. So let's kick off with the first thing, number one that I would do. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do then is click on the background layer containing our grass, get my freehand lasso tool and drag out a freehand selection here containing the grass below our line and behind him as well. And if I just turn off the layer containing the line, you can see by the marching ants the area that I've made a selection of. Now to cut that out, I'm just going to go to the layer menu, new, and then choose layer via copy or the keyboard shortcut command or control J. So basically if I turn everything else off, what that's done is just cut out this part of the grass. Well, I've actually made a copy of it. I'm then gonna drag that to the top of my layer stack. In fact, let's just turn my line on. So now you can see that grass that I've made a selection of is now covering our line. So I need to hide that behind a layer mask. So I need a black layer mask because we know that white reveals and black conceals when it comes to using layer masks. So what I can do is I can either hold down my Alt or Option key and click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel and that adds a black layer mask or I can just add a layer mask at the bottom of the layers panel, go to image, adjustments and invert, or a way that I'm liking to work now when we do have layer masks, I like to use the properties panel, if I just bring this up now, because in here we have this little button just at the bottom here called invert. If I click on that, whatever color the layer mask is, it'll swap it to the opposite. So white will go black, black will go white. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm then gonna get a brush, and I'm gonna go to my brush options at the top left of the screen, and in here, by default, we have two brushes we can make use of, and I'm gonna use one of them, and this is a brush that I've shown in a previous video, number 134, because already this looks like grass. So I'm gonna click on that, and when I choose the brush, I'm gonna go to the brush presets now, or the brush, brush options at the top of the screen, this little icon here with three little brush heads, click on that, and now what I can do is just use this dialog box to play around with the settings to make the brush that I'm using, and we can see the preview just here, make it look like the kind of grass that I want. So I'm gonna use shape dynamics and scattering. Now the size jitter, this basically means every single time I press down and use a brush stroke, it's gonna vary the size of the grass. And that's gonna be ideal for what we're doing now because all the grass in the field here isn't the same length. So that's gonna help with the realism. We've also got angle jitter, and I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit. So that 
that means that every time I lay down a new brush stroke, it's going to vary the angle of the grass that I lay down, again, helping for the realism. So once we've done these little settings in here, I'll just click back on the icon in the upper left just to hide that panel out of the way. Let's just zoom in a little bit more on our lion. And then making sure that my foreground color over in the toolbar here is white, I'm then going to paint with this grass-shaped brush to reveal that area that we cut out, but only in certain parts. And it's going to bring it back using the shape of this brush, this white brush. So if I just paint along here, and you can see it's revealing that grass, but in the shape of our brush head. So if I now just hold down my Alt or Option key and click on the layer mask, you can see it's basically the areas that are white, it's revealing that area of grass that I cut out, making it look now as if he is in the grass. Well, when I say that, this is probably as far as I showed in a previous video. But in part two, I want to show you now another thing that you can do to help with the realism. So before we go on to uh, the second part fully, I'm just going to add in just a little bit more grass just there. And you could say this, this could be enough. You could sort of turn this now on and off, and it does look as if he's in the grass. But in this part, part two, what I want to do is add a shadow. Because if the lion now was lying down within the grass, there would be a very kind of like subtle shadow now caused by the light and the grass against the lion's body. So a way that I could do that, or a way that I would do that to kind of like sell the fake is this. Let's just turn off what we've just done. And I'm going to click on the layer Contain the Lion. Then I'm going to get a Levels Adjustment layer. And let's just bring the properties up now. So what I want to do is add the kind of like the colouring for the shadow, kind of like darken it down. Now what I'm not going to do is use the mid-tone slider here on this Levels Adjustment, because if I use that, you'll notice that although the picture does darken, it also becomes very, very saturated, which doesn't look like the shadow. So let's just reset that. I'm going to use this bar down the bottom here, which is where it controls what the white, mid-tones and black points within our image are. And it'll give us a much more realistic looking color to the shadow or darkening. So I want to click on the white point and start to drag that inwards. Now you're going to notice that the whole picture is getting dark. I only want this to be on the lion. So that means I need to use a clipping mask with this, this little icon here. When I click on that, it basically means that Photoshop will only affect, this levels adjustment here, will only affect what is directly below it, which is our line. And you can see now only the line has been affected when I move this slider. So let's just darken it down. It doesn't matter how far I go with this because I've used it as a levels adjustment, I can always come in and make a change to it. We're working completely non-destructive and working smart here. So let's just bring it down to about that kind of darkness there. Now, we've got this levels adjustment, which has with it this layer mask, and the layer mask is white, but we don't want to have the effect all over our line. So again, now we need to have a black layer mask to hide it and then just reveal it in certain parts. So we click on the layer mask, and that brings up the properties here. And again, like I said before, we've got this little invert button at the bottom. So I'm going to click on invert. So then I'm gonna get the same brush, this grass, three blades of grass headed brush, and I'm just gonna paint now in white on this layer mask over our line, right at the very bottom where our grass is going to be. And this is gonna bring back that darkening now in the shape of the blades of grass something like that. It just needs to be very subtle. Now, if I just zoom in, this is what's going to be our shadow. But at the moment, it looks way, way, way too kind of like um, too sharp and too obvious. So within the properties box here, we've got the feather slider. So now if you look at the actual blades of grass over here on our lion, as I bring up the feather slider, you're going to notice that they soften down. This would be kind of like using the Gaussian blur filter, but this is allowing us to be non-destructive. We're not having to worry about using smart filters. We can always come back to this because this is all being done on a adjustment layer and it's allowing us a lot more flexibility. So we'll go for something around about there. And if we just turn that on and off, you can see what that's actually doing for us. So that's our shadow. Now let's turn on the grass that we already did in part one. So now we've got our grass and we've got our shadow beneath it like so. So already we're now starting to add in something that looks a bit more realistic. In fact, I've just noticed I've got a very clumpy bit of grass there. Let's just click on the grass and we'll just paint a little bit just in there to get rid of that. 
Okay, so the third and final part here is really all about the small things that you do in the retouching making the big difference. Because when we look at what we've got at the moment, we've we've added in these blades of grass, these fake kind of blades of grass here, but they're all very kind of uniform in the, what they look like. There's nothing on top of them. They're just simple, plain blades of grass. But when we look at the field, especially here, you can see that there are these blades of grass that have these kind of like seeds on the top of them, which we don't have on ours but we can fake the look of it as if they have got those just by using a brush. And the great thing is, it's a brush that's already built within Photoshop. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the uh, brushes at the top left-hand side of the screen. And when we open up the brushes here, it's not gonna be in the ones here by default. We need to go to the little cog icon here, right in the top right. And when we click on that, as well as having our um, default brushes, there's also a number of brushes within Photoshop which aren't necessarily being revealed but we can load these in very quickly and the one we want to use is in this little set here called faux finish brushes now when I click on that a little uh, dialog box pops up it says append cancel or okay I'll click on append which basically means add so we'll click on append and then those brushes those faux finish brushes are added at the bottom of all the brushes that we've already got loaded into Photoshop and the one I want to use is this one here number 50 because this kind of looks like the top of what we have on some of the grass in here where it contains all the seeds. So I'll click on that one. We'll go to the brush options and all I'm going to do is go to the brush tip shape and just increase the spacing. So I only have one at a time. Okay, so let's close that down and I'll just move this properties dialog box out of the way. Let's just close that down and drag it over there. I'll zoom in on our lion now and I've got this brush, this kind of seed head brush and I'm on the layer containing the grass that we've added in and I'm actually on the layer mask. So with this brush using a foreground color of white, all I'm going to do is come in and just go to the top of some of these blades of grass and click. And that's gonna give me the look of that grass head having some of the actual seed heads like so. And click on there. And we'll choose another one just here. Now if I need to change the angle of it, because some of this grass goes off in all kinds of different angles, all I need to do is just bring up the brush presets here by going to the little icon at the top left hand of the screen. And I can use this little disc here to change the angle of the brush. And you can see in the preview here how that's affecting it. So I'll drag it around like so. So let's just choose one that's on this, uh, this little head over here. So we'll click and we'll go for a bit one that's a bit more twisted around, something like that and we'll put that on there. Now if I go to the layer mask, if I hold down my alter option key, click on the layer mask, you can see on these heads here, how it's making that top of that head appear to have those little seed heads on. So that's just a little extra little thing that you can do. The small things making the big difference. Okay, so like I said, it's a very, very quick video there, but hopefully you've had something in there that'll help you. Certainly that final brush, that little faux finish brush there is great. And it's certainly one of those things that, like I said in the video, where you can do the small things to make the big difference in your retouching. And that is what takes it, as I always say, to another level. But I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that's episode 53. Episode 54 next week will also be another quick one because we are doing a bit of traveling coming up soon, but I'm gonna be there for you. Uh, uh, episode 54 out next Wednesday. But before I go, don't forget, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Let other people know about the channel and I'll see you soon.